birth right of every child. Green lawns and trees, fine buildings and good food all go to help build healthy bodies. And loving care and guidance make children into happy people. For more than half a century, children have been given these at Lake Bluff Orphanage. When they return from school each day, they are secure in the knowledge that this is home. And it is the next best thing to home. The children live in families of 14. There are two such families of grade school girls, and each family has a house mother who lives in Judson Hall with them. Thus, there is a greater similarity to home living and home relationships. Betty and Mary live in the same room. Each girl has her own bed, her own dresser, and her own wardrobe, and a considerable degree of privacy. Even in the bathroom, tub and shower are private affairs, and all the fixtures are clean and convenient. The boys live at Wadsworth Hall next door. There are two families of 14 each, and their surroundings are in every way exactly similar to those of their sisters in Judson Hall, save that they have house mothers and house fathers as well. The dressers and wardrobes make it possible for the boys and girls to have their own possessions and to keep them neat and clean. And next to eating, what youngster doesn't like playing best? Out of two city blocks at Lake Bluff Orphanage, there are two acres of outdoor happiness. Playing fields for baseball, for basketball, swings, climbs, and roundabouts. Baseball is a great favorite with the boys, and who knows, one of them may someday turn out to be another king of swat. There's a lot of fun, too, in basketball, and dropping one in is a real source of satisfaction. For the youngsters, a sandbox provides the opportunity for wonderful constructions and the fullest exercise of one's artistic talent. For the children a little older, there is a roundabout. This is one of the favorite playthings. And in addition to the roundabout, there are swings, teeters, and the slide. All these playground activities are supervised so that instruction is provided and a careful watch is kept. There are roundabouts for the littlest children, too, in the nursery school in Mackey Memorial Center. These younger children live in Swift Hall, in two families of 12 children each. A house mother, a house father, and an assistant give each family attention and care. As everywhere in Lake Bluff Orphanage, preschool play is both cooperative and individual, so that personalities are more fully developed. Sometimes, however, we get a little dirty, and then we have to get cleaned up. For children who are little, the things we use must not be too big. Not only our chairs and tables, but our wash basins, too, have to be easy to get at so that we can learn how to use them properly. Sometimes this learning is quite a task. Oops, that wasn't supposed to go down there. Now let's think about it a little. Maybe this way. Well, let's try it and see. There, that's the way. Now we can get our drink. Halfway through the morning, fruit juice and biscuits are served to all the preschool children. Hey, where's mine? Oh, there it is. And after refreshments, there is a short rest period. At least they call it a rest period. Another game, and such a favorite that it has its own special fixtures is a tank for boats and shells. And even though it's just a little damp, it's such a lot of fun. Some more water, but this is different. Unfortunately, there is no minimum age for the children of broken homes. At Lake Bluff Orphanage, 
there are eight infants under six months of age in their own very special nursery wing of the Swift Health Center. Here, there is the best of equipment, the best of care, and the best of babies. After the bath, there's a thorough drying. Now it's time to have some lunch. Even with seven other babies in the nursery wing, the infants are given individual attention. Babies need to be held and cuddled, and this is one duty the nurses always enjoy. The food is good, the service excellent, and we love it. Although we haven't yet learned everything about table manners. But lunchtime is past, and it's bedtime again. Nurse puts us in our cribs and tucks us in with care. My, my, it's been a long day. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll just have 40 winks. Good night. Many times during the day, the nurse walks in to see that all is well, to tuck in recalcitrant blankets, and to keep her wards happy. When the nurse must leave the nursery wing, an assistant is on hand to watch over and to care for the little ones. The baby's home is carefully separated from the rest of Swift Health Center so that there can be no slightest chance of illness entering. For the other wing of the health center is a completely equipped hospital. As the infant nurse enters the examining room, she finds that the nurse on duty there and the doctor who cares for the children at Lake Bluff Orphanage are just preparing to make the rounds of the hospital rooms to see how the patients are doing. Most of the illnesses are slight, but no matter how serious they might be, there is the proper equipment and the skilled personnel to provide the necessary care. On one side of the entrance to Swift Health Center is a dental office for regular dental care and the twice yearly examination. On the other side of the entrance hall is the medical examining room and first aid center. For there are always bruises and bumps, scratches and skinned knees. A trained nurse is always at hand to administer first aid. Most accidents are slight indeed, so cleansing and the application of an antiseptic and a bandage usually suffices. These attentions are always received with gratitude. Rosie's knee was really painful, but she's fixed up now, and I guess she'll survive. is a major item in the daily activity of any child, and at Lake Bluff Orphanage there is plenty of the best. Thirty loaves of bread, fifteen quarts of fruit, and twenty gallons of milk every day. The preschool children have two of their own dining rooms, one for each family. These are in swift fall, so that there is no disturbance during the business of eating. Each of the two dining rooms is served from the main kitchen of the orphanage, and each has its own gay mural.
The children take turns at being waiters. And when the meal is over, they remove the dishes, too. After supper, there is a variety of activity until bedtime. Mackey Memorial Center contains not only the administrative offices of Lake Bluff Orphanage, but also a charming reception room where the children may receive their grown-up visitors. The reception room and offices are on the ground floor, but upstairs are classrooms for preschool children and for remedial teaching of the older youngsters means of helping out those who are in some way retarded. In addition, every opportunity is afforded the children for the study of music. And in a room adjacent to the chapel, Jane finds her teacher waiting. Let's close the door so the scales don't bother anyone else. In the print shop, the children do their own press work. Written, designed, set, and printed, all by themselves under a house father's supervision. This is an invitation to one of their own parties to be addressed to their friends from school and in the community at large. Once the party is arranged, Imogene finds getting ready for it almost as much fun as the party itself. Getting ready to go out is fun for Peggy, too who has a date with her foster brother, Corky. For Peggy is a foster child, one of the children who, under the supervision of Lake Bluff Orphanage, have been placed in foster homes throughout the district. There are as many foster children outside of the orphanage as there are living at Lake Bluff, and there is always a pressing need for more foster homes. Like Peggy, Rose has found love and affection in a foster home, and her foster parents and sister join in her pleasure in flowers. It's a question who gets the most enjoyment, the child fortunate enough to find a place with foster parents or the foster parents themselves. The children at Lake Bluff Orphanage take part in all sorts of community activity and scouting ranks high in favor. Another pastime of which the boys are very fond is woodworking. And this provides not only the chance to develop skills under supervision, but rehabilitation for toys and furniture as well. Those children who have homework to do, and those who want to read or write for their own pleasure, have at their disposal an excellent library. Books and globes and atlases, magazines and plenty of table space attract the children to the library. And the help of a trained librarian is theirs whenever it's needed. And there's the bell for Beth. It's time to replace the books. Even the preschool children have a time with books before they go to bed. Each evening there is storytelling time and evening devotion. Before their prayers, the house father reads them a wonderfully exciting story, and the interest and concentration is supreme. Jack and the Beanstalk always commands attention, and Little Red Riding Hood gets all the sympathy that would be given a sister in like predicament. And now, it's time to go to bed. The end of a day of happiness for a hundred children, who, through broken families, have no home but this, and for whom this is home. Under the guidance of those who direct Lake Bluff Orphanage, come children from birth to stay as long as care is needed. More than 3,200 of them in the past half century, each to pluck his rightful share of health and love and happiness, to learn good citizenship and Christian living, and to grow to bring to others what he himself received, a world of happiness.